Hi, this is Julieta Young Orfiano. Welcome to my video. Kung first time ka sa channel ko, don't forget to like, share, o mag-subscribe ka para ma-notify kita sa tuwing may bago akong video. In this video, ang pag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa accounting process. Ang mga topics na tatalakayin ko ay ang sumusunod. Definition and Nature of Accounting Accounting Process The Accounting Cycle Now, umpisahan na natin ang una nating topic Definition and Nature of Accounting Ano nga ba ang accounting? Accounting is defined as service activity Ang function nito ay mag-provide ng qualitative information lalo na sa financial in nature tungkol sa economic entities na ang layunin ay maging kapaki-pakinabang sa paggawa ng economic decisions. Ang accountants ay nagbibigay ng kanilang serbisyo sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng information tungkol sa economic entities na nasusukat in terms of money. Ang mga entities na ito ay alinman sa profit-oriented business entities or business enterprise o kaya ay yung non-profit entities. Sa pangkalahatan, ang lahat ng parties na interesado sa entity, whether direct or indirect, ay tinatawag na stakeholders. Ang mga stakeholders na ito na gumagamit ng accounting information ay binubuo ng dalawang grupo. First, external users. Ito ang grupo or individuals na hindi direktang concern sa araw-araw na operasyon ng entity. Ngunit indirectly related to the said entity. Kabilang dito ang creditors, investors, prospective creditors and investors, government and the public. They make decisions that affect their relationship to the entity. Second, internal users. Sila yung management personnel sa lahat ng levels within an entity na responsable sa pagpaplano at kontrol ng operasyon. Kaya sa makatwid, meron silang access sa araw-araw na operasyon ng entity. They make decisions that affect the internal operations of the entity. Sa pangkalahatan, ang report na ibinibigay ng accountant ay ipinapahayag at nasusukat in terms of money. Kaya tinatawag itong financial reports and are of various types. Ang isang type ng financial reports is the financial statements. Ang framework sa paghanda at presentation ng financial statement issued by the Financial Reporting Standard Council or FRSC, ang accounting standard setting body sa Pilipinas, enumerates the following as the users of financial statements and their information needs. First, investor. Sila ay nag-aalala sa risk inherent in at yung return provided by their investments. Kailangan nila ang impormasyon para matulungan silang malaman kung kinakailangan nilang magdagdag ng investment, i-hold or ibenta ang kanilang investment. Ang shareholders or owner or investor in a corporation ay kinakailangan ang impormasyon to enable them na ma-assess ang abilidad ng corporation na magbayad ng dividends. Employees, sila ang mga taong interesado sa information tungkol sa stability at profitability ng kanilang employers. Interesado din sila sa information to enable them na ma-assess ang abilidad ng kanilang employer na magbigay ng remuneration, retirement benefits, at employment opportunities. Third, lenders. Sila ang mga taong interesado sa information that enables them na madetermine whether their loans at yung interest attaching to them ay mababayaran sa takdang panahon. Number four, suppliers. Sila yung mga taong interesado sa information that enables them na madetermine ang halaga ng pagkakautang sa kanila ay mababayaran sa takdang panahon. Number five, customer. Ito yung mga taong interesado sa information tungkol sa pagpapatuloy ng operasyon ng entity, lalo na kung meron silang long-term involvement 
o nakadepende sa entity. Number six, government and their agencies. Ito yung mga taong interesado sa information dahil interesado sila sa allocation of resources and therefore the activities of entity. Nangangailangan sila ng information para ma-regulate nila ang activities ng entities at ma-determine ang taxation policies and as basis for national income and similar statistics. 7. Public Ang publiko ay interesado sa information tungkol sa trends at ang recent developments in the prosperity and the range of its activities. Ngayon, ang pag-uusapan naman natin ay ang accounting process. Ang accounting process refers to the procedures at series ng steps na isinasagawa para makuha ang impormasyong inire-report sa financial statements. Ang accounting process referred to as the accounting cycle. Ang accounting process ay nahahati sa dalawang phases, namely, recording phase and summarizing phase. Ang dalawang phases at steps under each phase ay i-discuss ko later. Recording phase Ang recording phase includes collecting information tungkol sa economic transactions in the appropriate accounting records. Ang transaction ay economic event that changes an asset, a liability, or an equity account balance. Hence, it must be recorded. Ang accounting records, on the other hand, Kasama ang business documents, journals, at ledgers. Ang transaction ay nire-record in terms of debits and credits or the double entry system. Ang debit ay nasa kaliwang bahagi ng account samantalang ang credit ay nasa kanang bahagi ng account. Ang sumusunod ay rules ng debit at credits. Increase in asset, debit. Decrease in liability, debit. Decrease in equity due to withdrawals by the owner or owners, debit. Decrease in income, debit. Increase in expense, debit. Decrease in asset, credit. Increase in liability, credit. Increase in equity due to additional investment by the owner or owners, credit. Increase in income, credit. Decrease in expense, credit. Ang sumusunod ay ang diagram ng accounting cycle. Ang number one ay business transaction. Second is documentation. Third is journalizing. Under journalizing ay ang general ledger at subsidiary ledger. Number four is posting. Under posting is the general ledger and subsidiary ledger. Number five, preparation of a trial balance. Number six, Compilation of data for adjustment. Number seven, preparation of worksheet. Number eight, preparation of financial statements. Under preparation of financial statement is the statement of financial position or balance sheet, statement of recognized income and expense or the income statement, statement of cash flows, statement of changes in equity. Number nine, Journalizing and posting of adjusting and closing entries. Number 10, preparation of post-closing trial balance. And number 11, preparation of reversing entries. Kapag ang worksheet ay hindi pa nagawa, ang adjusting entries ay kailangang i-journalize at i-post bago ang financial statement ay maihanda. Ito ay dahil ang basis sa paghanda ng financial statement ay ang updated balances ng accounts sa general ledger. Ang cycle ay ang tuloy-tuloy na proseso at steps na maaaring mag-overlap sa panahon ng accounting. Ang recording phase is composed of the following steps. First, documentation. Ang documentation ay proseso ng paghanda o pagtanggap ng appropriate business documents Ang business documents, ang original source materials na nagsisilbing ebidensya ng transaction. Kasama dito ang official receipt, sales invoice, purchase invoice, credit memoranda, 
and debit memoranda. Second, journalizing. Ito ang proseso ng paglilista ng mga transactions sa unang pagkakataon sa libro na tinatawag na journals. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit ang journal ay tinatawag na Book of Original Entry. Ang transaction ay nililista base sa mga dokumentong inihanda o natanggap in number one. Ang kumpanya ay maaaring gumamit ng general journal at isa o higit pang special journals. Ang general journal ang pinaka-flexible type of journal kung saan lahat ng klase ng transactions ay pwedeng matala. On the other hand, ang special journal ay ginagamit sa pagtatala ng mga transactions na pangkaraniwan at, at nangyayari o kaya paulit-ulit na batayan. Ang common type ng special journals ay ang sales journal, purchase journal, cash receipts journals, at cash disbursement journal. Number three, posting. Ito ang proseso ng paglilipat ng nakatalang transaksyon mula sa journal papunta sa accounts in the ledger. Ang ledger ay grupo ng related accounts at tinatawag na book of final entry. Ang objective ng pagpo-post ay para maiklasipika ang epekto ng transactions on a specific asset, liability, equity, income at expense accounts. Ang kumpanya ay pinapanatiling parehas ang general ledger at subsidiary ledgers. Depende sa kanilang pangangailangan. Ang general ledger ay ang principal ledger na naglalaman ng lahat ng accounts na inireport sa financial statements. Namely, assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses. Kasama din dito ang kontra at adjunct accounts. Kontra accounts ay accounts na itinatag para i-record ang deductions from related accounts with positive balances. Kagaya ng accumulated depreciation, ibinabawa sa property, plant and equipment. Discount on notes payable ibinabawa sa purchases. Adjunct accounts ay accounts set up para i-record ang additions to related accounts gaya ng freight in ibinadagdag sa purchases. Ang subsidiary ledgers ay naglalaman ng detalye ng ilan sa mga general ledger account balances. Halimbawa, ang accounts receivable at accounts payable account balances are found in the general ledger. To illustrate, let us assume that bountiful merchandising reports accounts receivable from customer totaling 2,500,000 pesos. Ang total amount na 2,500,000 pesos is reflected sa accounts receivable account sa general ledger. Ang pangalan ng customer at amount due from each of them are found in the subsidiary ledger. Ang general ledger account na merong supporting subsidiary ledger ay tinatawag na controlled account. Ngayon naman ang pag-uusapan natin ay ang summarizing phase. Kasama sa summarizing phase, ang mga hakbang na kailangan sa paghahanda ng periodic summary reports. Ang phase includes the following steps. Number four, preparing a, a trial balance. Sa prosesong ito ang paghanda ng summary ng balanse ng accounts sa general ledger na kilala sa tawag na trial balance. Pagkatapos ng lahat ng transactions ay naipost, ang balanse ng bawat account ay dapat matukoy. Asset expense at temporary capital account gaya ng drawing ay mayroong normal na debit balance. Liability, equity, and income or revenue accounts ay may normal na credit balances. Ang trial balance ay inihahanda para patunayan ang equality ng debits at credits, ngunit hindi ito nagsasaad ng accuracy of work done. Gaya ng idiniska sa previous accounting subject, merong errors in recording na hindi magiging dahilan ng inequality sa trial balance. Ang halimbawa nito 
ay debiting or crediting an incorrect account gaya ng debit to accounts receivable, erroneously debited to notes receivable. Ang isa pang halimbawa ay failure to record a transaction or recording the same transaction twice. Ang preparation ng trial balance ay normally done in the worksheet. Number five, compiling adjusting data. Ang prosesong ito ng pagtitipon at putting together various data na kinakailangan para i-update ang balanse ng tiyak na accounts in the books of the company. Adjustments based on compiled data are then recorded bago ihanda ang financial statement. Ang adjustment na ito ay kinakailangan para ang income at expenses ay mai-report in the period they are earned, incurred, they are earned, incurred respectively. Hence, profit will not be misstated. Ang most common types of adjusting data are the following. A. Accrued expense. Ito ay expense incurred pero hindi pa nababayaran as of the statement of financial position date. Gaya ng interest, accrued notes payable. Another example ay accrued salaries of employees. Ang accrued expense ay unpaid as of the statement of financial position date. But it is matched against income or earnings for the current period. Adjustment for accrued expense is recorded as follows. Debit expense, credit payable. Example number one. Ang company ay may outstanding 180 days, 12% notes payable, dated October 2, 2008, amounting to 200,000 pesos. Ang interest ay payable upon maturity of the note. Ang, ang company's accounting period of financial year is the calendar year, that is January 1st to December 31st. Interest for 90 days has accrued on note as of December 31st, 2008, that is October 2nd to December 31st. The adjusting entry to record accrued interest is as follows. Debit interest expense for 6,000 pesos and credit interest payable for 6,000 pesos. 200,000 pesos times 12% times 90 over 360. Example 2. A company pays salaries every Friday, the end of a five-day work week. The total salaries for the week ending January 3, 2009 is 180,000 pesos. In this case, the 180,000 peso salaries for the week ending January 3, 2009 is for services rendered by employees on December 30, December 31, January 1st, January 2nd, and January 3rd. Therefore, the company has accrued salaries for two days as of December 31st, 2008. The adjusting entry to record the accrued salaries is as follows. Debit salary expense for 72,000 and credit salaries payable for 72,000. The computation is 180,000 times 2 over 5. Letter B, accrued revenue or income. Ito ay revenue or income earned but not yet received or collected as of the statement of financial position date. Gaya ng accrued interest on notes receivable, accrued revenue or income is not yet collected but is matched with expenses for the current period. Ang adjusting entry para i-record ang accrued revenue or income is as follows. Debit receivable and credit revenue or income. Example number three. A company received a 120 days 12% note dated November 16, 2008, amounting to 300,000 pesos. Interest is receivable upon maturity of the note. As of December 31, 2008, interest for 45 days, that is November 16 to December 31, is already earned but not yet collected. Ang adjusting entry para i-record ang accrual of interest income 
is as follows. Debit interest receivable for 4,500 pesos and credit interest income 4,500 pesos. The computation is 300,000 pesos times 12% times 45 days over 360. Letter C. Prepaid expenses. Ito ay expense na bayad na or acquired in advance gaya ng insurance premium. Ang ibang halimbawa ay rent paid in advance at office supplies purchase. Ang adjustment relating to prepaid expense at the end of accounting period ay depende sa method na ginamit sa pag-record ng initial payment. Meron tayong dalawang method sa pagre-record ng prepayments, namely the asset method at expense method. Under sa asset method, ang payment ay initially debited sa asset account at the end of the accounting period at ang expired or used portion ng asset ay ililipat sa expense account. Under the expense method, ang payment ay initially debited to an expense account. At the end of an accounting period, ang unexpired or unused portion ng asset ay ililipat sa asset account. Ang comparative entries para i-record ang payment and subsequent adjustment at the end of the accounting period under the two methods are presented as follows. First, to record the initial payment of expense. Under sa asset method, debit prepaid expense and credit cash. Under expense method, debit expense and credit cash. Second, to record adjustment at the end of the accounting period. Under asset method, debit expense Credit prepaid expense. The amount recorded is the expired or used portion of the prepayment. Expense method. Debit prepaid expense and credit expense. Amount recorded is the unexpired or unused portion of the prepayment. Example 4. On April 1, 2008, a company paid insurance premium of 60,000 pesos covering a period of 2 years beginning on this date. The entries to record the payment on April and adjusting entry on December 31st under the two methods are as follows. Under asset method, year 2008, April 1st, debit prepaid insurance for 60,000 pesos and credit cash for 60,000 pesos. December 31st, debit insurance expense for 22,500 and credit prepaid insurance for 22,500. The computation is 60,000 pesos times 9 over 24 equals to 22,500. Ang expired portion ng insurance ay para sa period ng April 1st to December 31st, 2008 or a period of 9 months. Under expense method, under expense method, 2008, April 1st, debit insurance for 60,000 pesos and credit cash for 60,000 pesos. December 31st, debit prepaid insurance for 37,500 and credit insurance expense for 37,500 pesos. Ang computation is 60,000 pesos multiplied by 15 over 24 equals 37,500 pesos. An expired portion of the insurance premium is 15 months. That is 24 months less than an expired portion of 9 months. Thank you for watching my video. I hope may natutunan ka sa video ito. Kung nagustuhan mo ang video ito, meron akong ginawang part 2 at continuation ito. I-click mo lang sa taas or sa baba ng video ito. Don't forget to like, share, o mag-subscribe ka para ma-notify kita sa tuwing may bago akong video. Once again, this is Julieta Yang Orfiano. See you on my next video.